guys, welcome back to Farmers. In this video, I want to share with you some pharmacist specialities that you didn't know of and that could make you some big bucks. Stay tuned. Hey guys, how are you all doing? I'm feeling great today. I just got a new fresh trim. I don't know if this trim is good or bad. The guy was kind of not really knowing what he was doing, it seemed, but hey, here we are. So anyway, I want to share with you some of the specialties or specialities that are currently registered in South Africa officially. And then I'm going to suggest two extra additional, which are already kind of specialities that most people recognize, but they're not official. So these two will be suggestions to counsel to please get on it. So first up, we have a pharmacokineticist. If you didn't know, yes, there is a speciality within pharmacy where people just focus on pharmacokinetics. And this is hugely important. I remember when I was still studying, um, Mrs. McCartney, Dr. McCartney now, hey, uh, she taught us this section with brilliance. Um, and I fell in love with it right then and there. And I told myself, one day I wish to be a pharmacokineticist because this is golden. I mean, you get to tailor dosages and you get to really customize a pharmacotherapy or a treatment to a specific patient. And that is what pharmacy really is all about. The reason why there's such control is to make sure that this specific drug is going to be fine and is warranted for this specific patient. But when you're in like a hospital setting, maybe somebody's hospitalized in a ward somewhere, maybe they have decreased renal function, maybe they have liver impairment, and all these things have degrees, varying degrees. So for you to administer an IV drug to them is dangerous potentially depending on the level or the rate of their filtration, the rate of excretion or metabolism and all kinds of stuff. So you really need to be careful to tailor that dosage to that patient. So they go down to the detail. If you know pharmacokinetics deals with how a drug is metabolized and we basically have the five, is it five or four principles of LADME. So the liberation, the absorption, the distribution, the metabolism, and the excretion. So pharmacokineticists are experts in these where they really look at each and every drug prescribed to a patient, whether it's warranted, whether the dosage is correct, whether the frequency, whether the route of administration, whether you know it's going to be fine for their body if they can metabolize it excrete it and the duration of therapy so this is already a specialty recognized by pharmacy council however the posts are uber uber rare like i don't know anyone personally who's a pharmacokineticist um i wish there were tons more just like pharmacologists um there's like so little and so few and i guess that's because people don't yet recognize the vital role that these people play in healthcare i mean it's the difference between a patient dying or not these things become so critical especially in like with chemotherapy or oncology care i remember when i was still working in oncology we used to tailor the doctor's um, prescriptions sometimes without even their knowledge because it was such a hassle and a fuss to go back to them, adjust the dose, justify it, da 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 and we could see these patients cannot handle it. We used to have this one reckless doctor who would just prescribe any which thing and he really didn't care. Like everyone who was assigned to him already knew like if you get him as your prescriber, you're dying because he was so ruthless. He would prescribe the highest doses of chemo to the weakest old little grannies and go-go's and we would be like no she's gonna die today if we give her all this amount so we would either tailor the dose or taper it sorry um or also 
increase the frequency like if it was a pump we would maybe it was like for over five hours or something we would like extend it um some of the dosages we would like reduce them and yeah we we had to and the patients lived and they were fine so um this speciality is definitely needed um clinical peeps get on to it uh because it was it's, it's gonna save lives literally um and yeah approximately a salary for a pharmacokineticist is drum roll 800 to 900 thousand rands per annum now this all depends on which hospital what degree of expertise or experience you have etc etc but that's some good bucks and um so if you didn't know now you know the next one to be registered and officially recognized by pharmacy council is radio pharmacy and again this is pretty much like basic everyone knows about radio pharmacy especially under the term oncology mostly there's a slight nuance and difference but overall they do the same radio pharmacists ensure any and every treatment that has to do with radioactive um, compounds to administer to patients and mostly those are Asian and chemotherapies um, I think there is also a course on radio pharmacy. I think it's UWC. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll put the correct one up here. A radio pharmacist can make anything from 860,000 rands a year up to a million. Again, depending on the center because highly specialized centers will pay big money. Okay, those were the two that are officially recognized and registered currently with the Pharmacy Council. Now I have three more that need to be suggested, and I think they were also on their way. I think I've read a report where these were trying to get registered, so they're already aware of it, and um, it's in the pipeline. Clinical Pharmacist. And again, much like the pharmacokineticist, these people are so crucial, especially in hospitals where you need to have a lot of pharmacology knowledge, a lot of clinical expertise on pharmacotherapy to understand what to start, what to stop, when to start it, what to give it with, what not to give it with, and everything. You're like carrying and babying that patient's therapy. Um, different dosage forms are not even warranted like somebody like a prescriber will give an IV dose whereas the patient is fine to take an oral dose especially if bioavailability is uh, similar or equivalent things like that um, then if you get full absorption from an oral dose you'd rather give that to the patient uh, like there's different things different times different reasons so it's just about trying to get the best to the patient tailoring dosage forms tailoring doses tailoring pharmacotherapy for individual patients a clinical pharmacist in south africa will get anywhere from 760 thousand rands a year up to a million again depending on experience depending on hospitals private public wherever um, I'm not even sure there's public hospital roles of clinical pharmacists. So far, I only know a handful that are all in the private sector. I may be wrong. I may not know of any uh, public sector ones, but they also need to get on it because it is so crucial, so critical to people's lives. And yeah, it's no reason these roles are uber important and highly paid overseas and internationally because other people recognize the role here not so much not yet but that's why we're here we're gonna show them the importance of us <laughs> public health pharmacy manager and this is specific to public health and to pharmacy management so pharmacy management is huge guys there is a lot to do literally like from stock control to clinics uh supervision and yay 
like some people some hospitals or some places cater to like 20 30 clinics and they're the ones managing their stock managing their um, patients their chronic medication and all of that so it's a task on its own um this needs to be registered really soon there's actually going to be like a master's degree that caters to i think correct me if i'm wrong but smu i think offers this as a master's so way to go smu and if you watch my video when i talk about postgraduate degree options i think i mentioned that there are two so thumbs up for smu and if you're into that kind of stuff go register Finally, the one I personally want to suggest is RA. Like, to be a regulatory affair pharmacist is a speciality in its own right. Because, guys, it takes a lot. First, you got to know those regulations inside and out. You got to have, like, experience for years. You know, there's no regulatory affair posts that are entry level, like, hardly. I have gone through maybe like production experience to get to RA or maybe through like your internship from like SAPRA or the old MCC or maybe to have done like a master's in it like a post-grad and then access to being an RA so yeah this should definitely be registered as a speciality because honey it don't come by easy, okay? So Pharmacy Council, I hope you're listening. You need to get on registering all these specialities because people are really true experts and spend years and years and years um, working in these roles but get zero recognition. Like, that's not nice. It's really not nice. So um, thank you because we know you're on it and yeah. Regulatory affair pharmacists get anything from 800Ks up to a million plus because they companies will pay huge money for a, an expert in regulatory affairs, okay? That involves the science behind regulations, like the reasons why. It involves the actual regulations, like mastering them. It involves, yo, a lot of legwork that you have to do if you're a regulatory affairs pharmacist. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And from me guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving it a big thumbs up. Share it so that somebody else who may want to know can get to know. And subscribe, join the family because we're an awesome family over here. We want to advance pharmacy. We want to advocate for all the beauty that pharmacy is in all of its sectors, in all of its different nooks and crannies. So yeah, join the family guys. Um, subscribe, go to our Instagram page, our Facebook page. Twitter isn't really active, but we're starting. So go there too. And yeah, like, comment, share, do the things, you know. And most because that's the theme for 2021 we are doing the most over here guys so spam the comments share it to everyone and we'll see you in the next video bye for now